Hello, thank you for clicking on this installment of Midweek Meditations for July 16th, 2020. This past Sunday at Allenville, we considered Psalm 91, how to have it made in the shade, so to speak. I'd like to follow up on that just a, a little bit today to talk about the experiences of one who uh, was provided shade by God. His name was Jonah. Uh, now, before we get into Jonah's story, just want to give a quick reminder of this idea of having it made in the shade. Uh, we found out that uh, God's shade was something that he was able to provide as a, as a shelter and, and a sense of protection. He who dwells in the shadow of the Most High, uh, that would be a choice that we would make. And the point we made was that in order to be in the shade of something, you need to be close to it. And beyond that, we began to take a look at what you look for in a shelter. What do you look for in a place where you can find shade? And we worked down through verses 3 through 8 in Psalm 91 to uh, cover that. Uh, bottom line is that when we are in God's shade, all of the possibilities of harm that could come uh, our way, God says that it won't come near us. We'll only observe it with our eyes. Now, that sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Um, now, from there, we go on to see what God has for us in the place of shelter. And he has reasons for providing that shelter. In verses 9 through 13 of Psalm 91, it talked about uh, the requirement for God to provide uh, that shelter, more or less, if is if you make the most high your dwelling, then no harm or disaster will come near you. Uh, how does God do it? God does it uh, by sending his angels to protect, to assure us of safety, and to give us victory in spiritual warfare. Now, what happened in the story of Jonah? that applies to Psalm 91 and specifically applies to shade. Well, you know the story of Jonah, don't you? Um, Jonah was a prophet. He was sent uh, on a mission from God. He was told he needed to go to Nineveh and preach against that great city. Well, you know what Jonah did. He, he uh, went the opposite direction. He, he booked a passage uh, on a ship going the other way. And, uh, God sent uh, a whale to pick him up after he was tossed off the boat. Jonah found some repentance in uh, the belly of the whale, and he was deposited eventually where he needed to be. Um, the king of Nineveh heard the word of the Lord, and he led the people of Nineveh to repent and to live God's way. Now that did not sit very well with Jonah. Hmm. We pick up um, the story in Jonah chapter 4. If you have your Bible, I invite you to grab it and turn there with me. Uh, it says here that Jonah was greatly displeased and became angry. Boy, you know, sometimes when we have it all set in our minds and we know what God is going to do and we know what should happen to people who don't uh, follow God's ways, and uh, we can become kind of judgmental. And I think Jonah might have had a little problem with that. God, in his grace, God, in his mercy, he responded uh, compassionately to the change of heart, the change of mind of the people of Nineveh. Hmm. In Jonah chapter 4, verse 2, it says, he prayed to the Lord, O oh Lord, is this not what I said when I was still at home? That is why I was so quick to flee to Tarshish. I knew that you were a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in love, a God who relents from sending calamity. Now, O oh Lord, take away my life, for it is better for me to die than to live. But the Lord replied, have you any right to be angry? Stop and think about that for a minute. When we see God's hand at work, and we expect one thing, but he does what is exactly consistent with his purpose and his character. Sometimes we, we don't take it so well. Now, we totally expect God to be gracious and compassionate and merciful with us, right? But to those who 
um, we know aren't living God's way. Um, and we're convinced that uh, they, they need to be straightened out. And it's our job to do that. Do you see all the problems with that? I think you do. Uh, Jonah apparently didn't. What did he do? Look at chapter 4, verse 5. Jonah went out and sat down at a place east of the city. There he made himself a shelter, sat in its shade, and waited to see what would happen to the city. Okay, yep. Middle East, that would be a, a warm place to be. But look what he did. He, he ran away, more or less. He kind of, I can see him kind of stomping off and sitting down with a big, <laughs> and just uh, getting warm out here. I'll build myself a shelter. I'll find the materials, I'll do it my way, and I'll do this all for me. And he sat in that shade, waited to see. I see a problem with that. Jonah did it his way. Look what God did. Verse 6, Then the Lord God provided a vine and made it grow up over Jonah to give shade for his head to ease his discomfort. And Jonah was very happy about the vine. Hey, all about me, right? I built me a vine, and look what God did. He's so good. He's so kind. He did this for me. Hmm. Jonah was happy. He was comfortable. And he was still watching to see what would happen to Nineveh, to see if judgment would come booming down. But at dawn the next day, God provided a worm, which chewed the vine so that it withered. When the sun rose, God provided a scorching east wind, and the sun blazed on Jonah's head so that he grew faint. He wanted to die and said, It would be better for me to die than to live. See, I think once again it was all about Jonah, wasn't it? Hmm. But God said to Jonah, do you have a right to be angry about the vine? Now, this is the second time that God asks Jonah if he has a right to be angry about what God chooses to do. Does that happen with us sometimes? Do we get angry at God and in so doing find that God removes the shade of his presence, removes the shade of his protective providence, maybe? Removes the shade of, of the grace and the mercy that we feel and that we experience? Do we get disciplined sometimes by God when we get angry at him? Now, mark my words, be sure that God's love, his grace, his mercy, his compassion, it never changes. God's love and care and mercy and compassion and grace, it, it stays the same. But when we remove ourselves out from under God's shade, then we don't sense his presence and everything that goes with it. When we get angry at God, we think that our own rights trump God's plan and his purpose and his will, don't we? I think that was Jonah's problem. He said, yeah, I do have a right to be angry about that vine. I'm angry enough to die. Hmm. But the Lord said, you have been concerned about this vine, though you did not tend it or make it grow. It sprang up overnight and died overnight. So God was pointing out. Uh, in fact, I think he was meddling a little bit, wasn't he, with Jonah? But Nineveh has more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left, and many cattle as well. Should I not be concerned about that great city? Wow. Talk about the compassion and the mercy and the grace of God. It's much bigger than ours, isn't it? You see, we really don't have any right to complain at God when we're angry with what he chooses to do or to not do, when we choose to remove ourselves out from the place of shade, from 
the shelter of his presence from his dwelling place. We have no right to be angry. And we won't have it made in the shade. So why does God do that? Why does God allow that to happen? Well, I think we find out here from Jonah's situation why he does that. Verse 11 tells us about God's purpose and the lesson that God had for Jonah in the end of that whole story about Jonah and, and his adventure. You see, are we so angry at God that we need to spend some time in the belly of the whale? And then be spewed out of the whale and land exactly where he wants us? Wouldn't it be much better to be obedient and go where he wants us to go or do what he wants us to do the first time? I think it's always better that way, isn't it? You see, sometimes when we're out of fellowship with God, when we don't honor his name, when he is not our dwelling place, except for a few select moments, then, yeah, we've removed ourselves out from under his shelter. Once we're willing to learn the lesson that God has for us to learn, that he's in control, that he will be compassionate upon whom he will be compassionate, and he will be gracious to whom he will be gracious, and he will be merciful to whom he will be merciful. Yeah. And then I think we've learned our lesson. God's in control. He is gracious. He is compassionate. He is merciful. And I pray, my friend, that you will experience God's grace, and compassion, and mercy, and peace today. So is there something that's bugging you? Is there something that you're angry at God about? Why don't you turn to his word and turn to him in prayer and bring yourself back into his presence and ask him how you can learn from this situation and be honoring and glorifying to him. Then you indeed will have it made in the shade.